Hey guys, this is Sarah with Raven's Crochet. Welcome back to my channel. Picking up right where we left off from yesterday. I'm going to show you guys how to do um, the stitch I was telling you about the other day. I'm going to take this out and show you exactly how I got to here. Let's go ahead and take this out. And I'll show you how I did this. Here's the stitch I'll be showing you guys. This is the velvet yarn I'm making a scarf with for my grandmother. It looks so much better in a velvet, puffy, uh, bulkier yarn. But I'm be, for the sake of this video, I will be showing you guys with this medium worsted weight yarn because it will be much easier for you guys to see the stitch and to see what I'm doing. But in this gorgeous, I love the stitch. It's not your typical V stitch. To me, it just has a slight more of a floral pattern, kind of like stars a little bit. I can see like star clusters or like little flower petals. Maybe like little tulips, kind of. It's not your typical V stitch. I love it. It's so gorgeous. I think it's perfect for chunky yarns. But, okay, so we did a granny square in the last video. And then I showed you guys you have to have an even amount of, of crochet clusters on each row. So that way when you put your stitch markers in the center space, you have an even amount of spaces across your row. And then you have an odd one right here in the middle. So that way your bag won't be lop loopy and lopsided and crooked and tilted and whatever. So I did 13 rounds all together. Four rounds of the flat part of the bottom, which is you know four rounds of a basic granny square, and then skipping one space in each in each in, in each round throughout. I did nine rows of doing that, skipping the sp center space, and that created my water bottle slinger. Now the stitch I used for the water bottle slinger strap was the exact same stitch I showed you guys in that scarf, because I just think it's such a gorgeous gorgeous stitch, and I'll be using it for a lot of projects. So I've completed the corner on my last round. We're going to say, we're going to pretend this is the top of the water bottle slinger. And we're going to continue on with this, with the side strap. So I chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I do a slip stitch over here, slip stitch. And I do a second slip stitch. Just to give it some extra stability. Let's see, I don't like that. Slip stitch, there we go. Slip stitch, all right. So you can either do, a, sometimes I usually just do a slip stitch and then a single crochet because it looks better. It looks more similar to the other corner. And it's so much easier to do a slip stitch and then a single crochet versus a slip stitch and a slip stitch. Making sure I still have eight chains. We're just gonna single. We're just gonna slip stitch and do a single crochet. So much easier to grab that slip stitch, and you're not losing anything. And to me, it just looks better. So then we're going to chain one. And I do this because it leaves gaps out. Sometimes if you do a double crochet strict double crochet row for row for row for row you're going to have these gaps on the end on the sides of your work so i chain one turn my work and then i do a double crochet right there in that first stitch right there in the first stitch and this is going to be the side now we're going to skip one chain and i go in these back bumps i go in these back bumps right here can you see those you got a back bump right here. There's a back bump. Um, let's see, where's the next one? Oh, there we go. Okay, back bump, back bump, back bump. It's like the back side of your chain. Like there's the front side where you can see the V's. And then there's the back side with the bumps. See those cent bump those bumps in the middle? Get my camera to focus. So there's. There's the front of the chain, which you're more than welcome to go through. Go underneath two, two loops in each chain. But I like to go on the back bumps, because it just gives the edge of the strap a cleaner look. So I skip one, and I do two double crochets into this back bump right here. Two double crochets. 
two double crochet skip one and then do two more double crochets in this back bump skip one and then do two more double crochets in this back bump and then I skip one and then I'm going to do a double crochet right here but I'm going to pick up two loops instead of going under that back loop the back bump I go underneath two loops because that way won't leave as much of a hole right there and that's the first round of the strap now if you're doing this pattern without attaching it to anything when you start off your chain make sure it's an even number and I'll show you guys how to do that basic stitch in another video. I'll be more than happy to do that because it's such a great pattern. It's so easy. A beginner can do it. You just need to know your basic chains and your double crochets. So I chain one, turn my work. I don't chain three and count that as a double crochet. I just chain one and then I turn my work and I do a double crochet right there in that first stitch of the row because it gives it a cleaner edge and there are no gaps in it. So then we're going to find the there's a uh, find a cl there's clusters now. We did two double crochet in each stitch with a chain one with a, with an empty chain in the middle. So now we have clusters, two double crochet clusters. We are going to go right in between these clusters, and we're not going to be working into these chains, which makes this pattern so easy. Not into these chains. We're going to be working in the very center of those two double crochets right there. So yarn over and then work two double crochets right there in between those two double crochets in the previous row. Yarn over, find the next two double crochets, work right in between them. I hope you guys can see this okay. Again, leave a comment below if you want me to do anything differently, if the lighting needs to be better, if my camera needs to be slightly further away, um, I can't. I can zoom in, but I can't zoom out any further than this. But um, let me know if you have any issues with this video, if you may change anything. Yarn over, find the next two clusters and work between them, and do two more double crochets. And then here we are at the end. We're going to double crochet into the very top of this crocheted double crochet from the re from the row below. And there's the end of the second row. And then repeat. This is a one row repeat, super easy. Chain one, turn your work, and I do a double crochet right there in that first stitch. Then I find the next two clusters and work right in between them with two more double crochets and two more double crochets in between those two we're not working in the chains again we're working in between in between these clusters there's the top of the chain space we're working in between working in between right here so do your yarn over and go in between and do a double crochet. And here we are at the end. See the see the loop right there, the, the big loop right there on the top. Zoom in camera. Focus. Focus. This V right there. And we're gonna work in there. Two loops. Unhook and then do our last double crochet. And there's three rounds. So you just chain one, repeat every single row just like that. And I did, oh, I never counted how many rows I did for the strap. I say at least 40 rows. Do 40 rows and see how you like that. And you can do like 10 rows and you can make it like a wrist strap. Um, or you can make like a short strap just to carry on your wrist. I've done that too. But do 40 rows and then fit it across your body, put it over your head and over one shoulder and make sure it's shorter than what it looks like it needs to be. Don't make it as long as it needs to be because this yarn will stretch 
over time, especially with the weight of your drink in, the, in here, this yarn will stretch. So don't make it as long as it needs to be. Make it like two or three inches shorter. Um, so that way it won't be too long. I've had them to where the straps are way too long and I had to tie like a big fat knot in it because the yarn stretched so much. So make this two or three inches shorter than what you visually need it to be and it'll stretch out as it, as it gets washed and used and stuff. So that's it for this tutorial. Um, I'm going to show you guys now how to make the half triangle granny square because I told you guys I would do that. Let me get another pair of scissors over here. We're just going to snip it because I need to make that into something anyway. So now we're going to do the half square granny triangle. And this is great for ponchos. If you want to do half of a square for a granny square blanket, um, anything like that. So we're just going to chain two, let's see, this one, two, three, four, five. Chain five. So we're going to have one double crochet, chain one, and then a space to work with. So then you're going to chain five, and then you're going to yarn over and insert your hook in the very first stitch from your chain. Make sure you have two loops on your hook and do three double crochets right here. There's one, two, three. Chain one, do one double crochet. I love it when people do this on tutorials because it really helps me know what stitches I'm doing. So now, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. I really hope you guys can see this. Okay, so we did the chain five, one, two, three, four, five. We did three double crochets on this first chain from the hook. There's our three. We did a chain one space to mimic the space over here. We did a double crochet to mimic the chain three right here. So now we're even. Next round, we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Turn your work. We're going to do three double crochets in that first space right there. Three double crochets. There's the next cluster. Now, again, when you're working any granny cluster stitches like this, you are more than welcome to chain one to hop on over, but I do not. Um, I go up a hook size than what's recommended, and I skip doing the chain one spaces because, in my opinion, it, it just uses up way more yarn, and it adds a lot of time in your project. It takes a split second to do chain one, but however many chain spaces you're doing, that's a lot of split seconds added up together, so less time, less yarn, bigger hook, I can get a bigger project that is just as drapey. Um, so it's especially great when you're doing blankets and shawls. So I'm going to yarn over and just immediately work my next cluster into this next space. Cluster of three granny, cluster of three double crochet stitches, excuse me. Get some more yarn slack to finish that double crochet. Now to finish the end, we need to mimic the other side here. We have a we have a space over here. We have the chain three and the chain four, which makes that space. The chain three and the chain four, which gives us that space. We need to mimic this other side. So we chain one and then do a double crochet to finish this row. And then now we have, here we go. A cluster of granny, uh, a cluster of stitches here, a cluster here, and a cluster here. So each row, each row that you do, you're going to have an extra granny square cluster at each end. That's what these spaces here at each end are for. You're going to work a cluster in there. You're going to work a cluster in, in every space in between until you get to the end. Then you're going to do a chain one and a double, one double crochet at the end. So let's do this round again. This is a one row repeat too, by the way. Also makes it super easy. One, two, three, four. Turn your work. Do your first cluster, three double crochets right there in that space. 
Again, if you want to, you can do a chain one to hop on over that cluster. I don't. I just immediately work double crochet stitches in the next space. Hop on over, working your next cluster. We're at the end of the row, so we're going to chain one and do one more double crochet in that space. Without losing my yarn, preferably. Let me do that a little bit tighter. Sometimes it gets too loose like that. If, if you lose your tension a little bit, I just stick my yarn back in that. I stick my hook back in that loop, and then I just I redo it. So here's round three. As you can see, our rows are building. You have one new cluster on each round. I'll do one more row with you guys. Chain four, turn your work, do three double crochets in that very first space. Chain one if you want to to hop on over, but I don't. Do three more double crochets in that next space. Those spaces that are in between the three double crochet clusters. Just keep on to going down the row. And then we got one more space here at the end. Three more double crochets. Oops, I just did a half double. Let's go back and fix it. No big deal. Chain one and one more double crochet. We're at six, 17 minutes, so we're not too bad. I get cut off at 33 minutes. So that's another reason why I need to transfer a new phone. So there's four rows there. There, there I'm centered. Sorry about that, guys. I'm getting used to the tutorial thing, so I apologize if they're a little crummy. But um, so we got one row, two rows, three rows, four rows. And the amount of um, clusters indicate which row you're on, which is cool. That's how granny squares work too. However many granny square clusters you have across, that's how many rows you've done, even on a diagonal count. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, yep. One, two, three, four. It's pretty cool. So you just keep going in that manner, and it makes a gorgeous shawl. And it's super, super easy. Super easy once you have the, um, once you get the hang of holding your yarn and working your, working your, with your hook, it's so much easier. So I'm gonna leave it here, and I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. Again, if you have any suggestions, complaints, tips, any ideas, Please be nice about it and leave them down in the comments below. I would really, really, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, anything else you guys want to see, let me know. I will be doing another tutorial on how to do this stitch. There's the velvet scarf that I'm using that stitch with. The same stitch I just showed you guys and the strap on this water bottle slinger. To me, it just looks so much better in a, in a, in a bulky yarn. You can kind of see the difference a little bit here. But to me, it looks so much better on a bulky yarn. They look like star clusters instead of V-stitches. In the worsted weight yarn, they look like V-stitches. But in the bulky yarn, it looks more like flowers and stars. So anyways, thank you guys for watching and I will show you guys how to do this in another video. Um, just the plain pattern all by itself and that's all I have for now so thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys are having a great week I love you guys bye bye